My goodness, that was interesting <laughs> trying to get in here. So what happened was the lionesses got up and chased some impala, but unfortunately were not successful. But they had left the little cubs all on their own. So we couldn't come into the sighting with just the cubs. We tried to find the lionesses. And by the time we got them, uh, the impala were all scattering about and, and they were on their way back to the cubs. So we took the scenic way around to give them enough time to rejoin. And of course, they are all here. You can see all the, that's one of the lionesses we're looking at. And then if you go off to the right, you'll see that there's mom with three, four little ones. The grass is so long that it is almost impossible to see them hiding away over there. But they are indeed here, as you can see. The two older ones look like they're more awake. And the youngsters obviously missed mom for the whole five minutes that they were gone and decided to tuck in to, well, the greatest thing that they know. And that, of course, is milk. And they need to eat. Not eat, they need to drink lots and lots of it. I was just listening, there's another car still just in the distance. Now, I do want to update the sighting when I can get a moment. Let's see if I can do that now. Just so that there are other people on a standby. So we're not going to be able to stay here for very long. Because unfortunately with a sighting like this, this is light sensitive. And as you know at this time of the year, unfortunately there isn't much light. And there's still two more vehicles that need to come into the sighting. So while it is just a one vehicle sighting, we just need to make sure that we are courteous. And we rotate the sighting quick enough so that everybody gets a chance to have a look at them. But we'll see, hopefully we get them playing, even if it is just for five minutes, it would be nice if those little ones will finish up with their drink and then put on a show, which would be really cool, wouldn't it? And I'm still just waiting for a gap, no gap, so we shall turn the radio off. Come on, little ones, wake up. Maybe the two older cubs, when I say two older cubs, they're not much older, they're only two months older than their siblings. But they're much bigger. They've grown very, very quickly. Those two. It's just amazing how quickly they get. I can't wait to see them Kahuma Pride again. So that I can see how big the little. Well, they were once little. I suspect that they are probably four or five times the size of the oldest cubs now. And looking more and more like adults. And I wonder if any of the young boys that are in that pride have started to get their hairy chests. Hopefully they will make their return soon. I did hear that they were chatting about the Ngumas this morning and it sounds like they're somewhere between, they keep going between Simbambili and the Manuleti. And they did have tracks around Sydney's dam coming from the Manuleti, but I think they said that the tracks went back across and, and deep into the Manuleti. So it's a little bit sad for us. But hopefully everything's going to go back to normal, especially once the grass all dries up and the big herds of animals start coming back then we may see the return of the Nkuhumas. Maybe they're seasonal lions. For our summer months, they go off on a holiday. They just keep chasing the warmer weather. And then when it gets cooler, they come back to Juma. That's what I'm hoping anyway. But there we go. One of the cubs has said, I've had enough to drink now. I am going to go on an adventure. And I don't know what adventure it thinks it's going to go on. Just to give mom a little cuddle. Well, isn't that sweet? And you can see that they're still so tiny. They've got their little spots covering their body still. Look at all those spots on top of their heads. Aren't they so sweet? Now it would be really nice if they would just move into the lovely golden light and play there. That would be ideal. Alice, please may I have that name again? I think, I think lovely critters is what I'm hearing. I'm not certain. I apologize if I have butchered your name as I'm not, not able to hear it very well. Um, but you were wondering how much milk in a day do these little lions drink a lot? I'm not sure exactly. Oh, look, at the little one's gone over to mom. Oh, just, just missed it. She, that little cub went under mom's chin and mom sort of hugged it back. Um, so, so what happens is they, they need to drink constantly. They'll drink every few hours for the first couple of months of their life. 
and I'm sure they've been introduced to carcasses. We saw the waterbuck carcass to, uh, yesterday, or even and in the morning with Tristan, and uh, I'm sure that they would have been eating it. Now, I just heard there's a gap on the radio. I just want to quickly recall in the sighting. Uh, stations, if you can copy me, um, back on lock with the Sticks Pride. Um, it's just one vehicle here. Ryan is on first standby and Ellie is on second standby. I won't be too long as I know this is a light sensitive uh, sighting. There we go. Just quick, just quickly called that in. So that's done. My duty is done now. Like I said, we've got two more cars still in their way, so we don't want to keep them waiting for too long. It is nice to just turn these sightings over. But those older cubs, you can see that their bellies are exceptionally full. So I think that they've had a combination um, of a lot of meat from that waterbuck carcass. I think this, they must have finished it off last night, as well as milk. They'll still be drinking lots. They're sort of gutsing as much as they can at the moment. This is when they're growing and they need to make sure that they are fit and strong because they're very pet playful too so they're burning a lot of energy milk is full of fat and protein so it's really really good for them and it'll be able to sustain their sort of active sort of boosts that they get every now and then playing with each other biting sticks as this one is doing which is great to teethe on you can imagine you know what children are like when they start teething and you know what it's like having a dog and cat at home when they're puppies or kittens they chew and scratch everything all these lions will do exactly the same thing, but luckily it is not furniture that they are chewing on. They're just using what they can find out in the bush. And sticks are a very nice thing to gnaw on. Trees make for great scratching posts, and that's one of my favorite things to see a lion do, is to stretch up vertically and claw their tree, claw the trees, sorry, which is really quite nice. Hello, girl. She's got a head up. She, the lionesses are looking so much better, which is great. Now, Bubby, you've asked if these lions are born with their eyes closed like kittens. They are indeed. For the first 10 days of their life, they're completely helpless. Oh, look at the little cub just to the right. It's gone to play over with its sibling, and now you can see the size difference. And so, yes, so for the first 10 days of their life, they're pretty much helpless, and their eyes are closed, and they start to open after that. They're relying on mom to move them around quite a bit. But now at this age, they're still a little bit wobbly. They're still strengthening all their muscles. And sometimes um, climbing over very small obstacles can be quite a big challenge. And that's why it is so funny uh, to watch little lions play as they're learning. You see the sibling went over to that young lion and said, hey, play with me. And they are a bit rough to start off with. But don't worry, animals are tough. Remember, we've seen them overcome certain injuries we've seen them overcome a number of different things so a swat to the face or perhaps a pounce from not one but all of their siblings really wouldn't do much damage to them they bounce back like anything they're tough and they have to learn to be tough and um, sort of sustain little blows like that but if you've s seen and watched all the sightings we've had with the Nguhuma cubs and the Styx cubs prior to this, you know that they are exceptionally rough. And it's often the little ones that are the instigators because they go and they chew on tails that they're not supposed to be chewing on. And you can imagine that the others will retaliate or you can pull the stick and anything really grabs their attention, the smallest of small things. But look at that comparison between the two. Remember, the little lions, the tiny ones, they're really young. They're not, I went and looked in my book and I'd written that between, they said they were born between the 25th and the 28th of February, so they are not even two months old yet. But lion cubs <clears throat> are very relaxed, as you've seen. Having one vehicle in the sighting is not a problem at all. But you don't want to put too many in. We were chatting about this yesterday, but I know we have new viewers every single day. So if you're wondering why we can't spend too much time here, it really is just because it is a time sensitive subject. And of course, these cubs are young. But in the next few weeks, the sighting will go up to two vehicles. And eventually in big open areas, you will get yourself to around three vehicles. But they, they relax a lot quicker around the cars than leopard cubs do. They, leopards sometimes need a little bit more of habituation. But these guys learn very quickly from their older siblings and, of course, their mothers that we are nothing to be feared, but we're also, also nothing to eat. So they're curious. They'll come up and sniff the tires and that type of thing. But you don't really want them to be getting too close anyway. <laughs> now, 
Now, Shamsin, a very interesting question. You've said this afternoon, could the Nkuhuma Cubs and the Styx Cubs form a coalition? Now, it's not entirely possible uh, whether the, the males from uh, this litter and the males from the Nkuhuma litter, whether they join up or not, I, I'm unsure. But it isn't uncommon these days in, in the Sabi San um, to see male lions joining up together. But if all the males from the Nkuhumas, I, I can't even remember how many there were. I think there's only two now but I stand corrected. I feel as though I haven't seen them for months and I've completely forgotten um, how many, uh, w which sex is passed on. But maybe you can help me if you do remember w what the sexes of the cubs are now with Nguhumas. You can hashtag Safari Life just to refresh my brain. Um, I think though they would have, they would have had more, there's gonna be more than one of them. So the chances are unlikely, but if it was say just one male from the sticks and one male from the Nguhuma pride, and perhaps they stumbled across each other, they might. We can't say no. We saw it with a, a lion named Solo, uh, or the Kruger male, and then there was another lion by the name of Freddy, I think they called him. And they, those two joined up later on in life and decided to form a coalition together, which was unusual, but a very clever strategy, of course. Two lions is better than one. So you never know. Where It might not be soon, it could be later on. But again, if there's more than one of them in a pride already and they leave together, the chances become less and less. But if they go on as a single male, then there definitely is a possibility. I think these animals surprise us all the time. Just when we think we know exactly what they're going to do, they throw a spanner into the works. But today seems to be a quiet, casual is it Monday today? It is Monday, isn't it? Yes. And a day to be chewing on sticks. That's really cool. And they are so little. Ah, oh, okay. Arthira from Israel, you said that there's only one male cub left in the, the Nguhuma Pride. Ah, oh, so it must, so the two that unfortunately passed on with white muscle disease must have been the other two boys, which is a little bit sad, actually. I thought there were three, three males and five females, if I was not mistaken, but I do stand under correction. Uh, it's very sad that there's only one now. Well, you never know. We'll have to just wait and see what happens. Maybe there's going to be some more cubs on the way, you know. Amber Eyes is yet to have a litter and the youngest Nguhuma lioness who has been seen mating multiple times with various Birmingham boys. So there's also a chance that she could have her first litter too. We've just got to keep our eyes open. Wouldn't that be amazing if we could just keep getting uh, doses of lions every single time, little lions popping up. The same thing goes with the leopards. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Because everybody's growing up so quickly and I think if it wasn't for these little sticks cubs, we don't even have any little leopards anymore. I think Tumbo, or I suppose Shadow is Shadow and her cub, but other than that, that's all. Because Tumba's getting very big now, Osana and Shungile are definitely not little anymore. Futumi is not small, they've all grown up incredibly fast. It's actually amazing to think that I've only been here for eight months, or just almost eight months, and I've watched all these animals grow so much. It's actually a little bit scary how quickly time flies when you're out in the wilderness. And I remember when I first started and the Ngahumas, the youngest set of Ngahumas were just a little bit older than these cubs that we were looking at. <laughs> and there we go, you can see size does matter. That was a clear example of how that sibling just sort of came in, bulldozed the little one over and said, this is my stick and now I'm also going to use you as a bean bag or as a pillow. <laughs> but don't worry, the tables will turn one day, all those little ones will start pouncing on the older cubs and ganging, ganging up on each other. <clears throat> now we're not gonna be able to stay here for very much longer, I'm afraid. Like I said, we've gotta let some other guides come through and the sun is not far off from disappearing around behind the horizon, but Jamie has got another animal that would also like to go to bed when the sun goes down.